hope. It has to drive every fly fisher. On mornings like this, it's hard not to fall into unrealistic hopefulness, and sometimes reality and unrealistic hopes converge. We were treated to a crazy parade of trout from the time we arrived to its abrupt end. Along the way, we applied a lot of different tactics and had a whale of a day. As we moved upstream, two things were soon obvious. The fish were stacked in the weed beds, and on this roadside shoulder, the angling pressure had been high. Long and fine leader was the order. I was refused twice by this nice brown. As I was adjusting the light tippet and a mayfly emerger, another good brown showed up, moved to the one I was working, and they swam off to the main current before stationing on a gravel wave. I was getting in the water, we were actually seeing a fish um, holding in and rising, feeding on a, on a weed bed, just on top of a weed bed. But I was actually getting out below him and to his left, more into the middle of the river. And it turns out that it actually wasn't the right thing to be doing because I was pushing other fish up to him. And so I pushed a fish up to him and the two of them swam off together because he got, you know, buggered by the other fish and they swam off together, swam upstream, and thought it was gonna be over. And then the one fish that I had wanted to go for had actually dropped back and was only a few rod lengths in front of me, kind of more out to the middle of the river. So I had a chance, gave a cast, and, and I got lucky. He is funny though, because I let it quite a bit, and it dropped and took my dry fly anyway downstream, but I managed to wait, set the hook, and I got the fish. So that's cool. So I think we are learning. <laughs> Amelia has caught a couple fish. We've only gone about 80 yards from the van and Amelia's already got two fish, but in getting those two fish, we've spooked a couple of other fish out. Um, what she was doing is the traditional get out in the water and spot the fish, work and slowly get weighed into position. And what's that done is push some fish out from underneath the weed beds into the fish as she's working and then that one buggers off and we have to wait for it to come all the way back home. A couple of them haven't done that but a couple of them have and those are the ones she's caught. I've got a fish just up here and I'm just going to sneak up on the bank 
and then drop in, make sure that I don't spook anything up to this fish I'm about to go for. And just to be sure, we've dropped it down to 5X with a size 14, 16 Mayfly Emerger. Just a, basically a splayed hair wing, goose by it tail, and uh, 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 some of those micro fibbit uh, hair dye samples as a tail on this Mayfly. So we'll, we're gonna see if it works. I think it should, uh, but you never know what the fish is gonna do. But I think if I just put it in there slightly to the left, I should be able to get a take or at least have a good look. So I'm gonna get a little closer and we'll, we'll just have a go. walking up and of course we're looking for mayfly and caddis eaters along the weed beds in shallow and I see a fish holding about thigh deep in the bottom there uh, out in the main current just on a gravel drop so what I'm gonna do is just tie on a, a, a damselfly nymph naked and just launch it at him I'm not too fussed there's a lot of fish today so we may as well have some fun and try different things just gonna basically go naked lead it by three four feet hope I don't line them and let it sink into him and let's see what happens. Okay, I do see him there, yeah. Ready? I sure am. It was pretty fast and furious. As we worked one fish, we'd see another fish just upstream feeding. As Dave landed his fish, I was planning my approach on another upstream. A little deeper, I'd likely be a dropper nymph feeder. The start of the next session was deliberate and it worked out beautifully. How I went at this fish is not the way to go about it and I was doing this to prove a point. It all worked out perfectly. Again, there's so many fish, you may as well just try some different stuff. I got a fish clear across the river on the far side weed bed and it's just sitting there uh, surfing a, a bottom drop off zone 
And since that last fish was so willing to take this thing, let's just launch, launch this thing across and see what happens. Uh, just for fun, let's see if I can, hey, see if I can hit that far seam without catching my back house on the toy toy or Madagari or gorse. And then let's see if I can nail that far seam and let's just see if, uh, let's see if he'll come. Yeah. <laughs> right through there on the other side. Go for it. Another fish and spooked it right into the one I was going for. So they went off in a happy little chase. Maybe if I work this one down here, the other one will come back. So let's do this, stand normal and just haul and cast into the seam, 10 feet above him, lead him in and set, oh, right out of his mouth. Oh, really? No, no, right out of his mouth. He came halfway across the river to, to eat it. Really? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so he's gone back to his rock. No, he's not home yet. Oh. That was dumb. I thought because he moved, he was eating. Okay. So I'm going to try that again. Okay. And there we go. That's dragging, set the drift. Oh, no, he's, he came right across the river again. Really? I can't believe that. So he's okay. chasing it. Yeah, come over here. Uh so ha, I have to rebuild my leader. That fish came right from the far weed bed, swinging, chasing that big damsel nymph right across the stream, all the way over here. I didn't know if he had it or not. That's the third time he's chased right across the river. Uh, I think that was the only time I actually let him look. Um, and then, of course, I just set the hook in case. And, well, when you do that, you're kind of an idiot. And you're in the wind. Your line's just going, woo -hoo! And my leader wound up all in the bare grass and the toy toy and savaged my leader. So now I'm rebuilding. Uh, again, I'll probably just go 3X this time. Uh, same fly, but I'm going to tie on a little caddis emerger pupa to go with it in case he just wants to eat something and smack something that he hasn't seen. The point is to get it deep enough. He's already looking three times. So I'm going to count on him going, hey, I want to eat that. Oh, how about, a, how about a biscuit off the back end? So let's go with that. Okay, so what I was just doing is kind of just screwing around with these fish just because there's so many fish and it's just fun to see them what they're gonna do. But what I was just doing when I, you know, when we're guiding for the last 20, 25 years, uh, a little bit of guiding anyway still, but at the peak of our guiding, you, on our walking wade trips, we go into these cutthroat trout streams and it's, our, our guests would be on this side of the stream like this, just bombing across the river and just drifting their foam and the fish would come up and eat and they'd set the hook and miss. Well, that's exactly why, because you don't have a set drift. So even though this fish, I've got this fish to move four or five times way out, I'm now going to drop down the river, get across, go back the same side, and I'm going to try a cicada pattern with a, lar uh, with a long dropper and get in the same drift and see if I can get this fish to eat, even though he's already swung and probably taken my other nymphs and he's probably a little shy. Let's see if we can overcome that by doing things properly. And hopefully I'll, I'll be able to show you the difference between just launching it and actually doing it in the same seam and getting the same, uh, a good drift into a fish rather than dragging it across because there's a massive difference in result. So let's get me across the river in the same current seam and speed as the fish. Get my cast and drift in my control zone on a much shorter controlled cast and see what happens with a fish that has already eaten or refused my nymphs four or five times. Again, by happen chance, you know, the being just playing around, casting small flies across, swing, not connecting, swing, not connecting, swing, not connecting. Three times that fish came all the way across the river to chase my nymphs. And I thought, you know what, let's do it right. 
and by chance I got over, saw the fish, saw the smudge, saw the shape, saw him swaying, chucked out a dry dropper and first cast in there, the thing just came over, smoked the dry fly. And that is always the best case scenario. Get across the river, get in the same seam as the fish and let that dry dropper float, drift naturally to the fish with a good cast and that's usually how it goes. Just above Dave's fish, we came upon a line of willows alive with cicadas. There was a far bank pocket that just screamed fish. Okay, so I've just walked up here and right above this willow, uh, about three rod lengths up is a fish that's actually holding underneath the undercut. And it's hard to see him where he's holding, but he swings out about three feet to his right to, to feed quite consistently. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm tying on a cicada pattern and I'm going to flop it out and I'm going to see if he's going to come to it and take. It'll be a lateral line thing, but there's a really good chance that he will because he's been feeding pretty aggressively, like three feet to his right. Hardest part, we'll be getting into position. That's a hell of a deep drop you're going yeah. to swim into. <laughs> it's deep below me and I have to get down the bank without him seeing me and have a chance. So we'll see what happens. up was starting to go up into the fish and I just said Dave I gotta go now and I went now and I got that fish otherwise I think the mud would have spooked him off yeah so I got this fish on the lateral line take which is exactly what I was hoping for and he came right out and and it, he had he had to drop which he had been feeding to drop anyway but it's the fight I actually want to talk about because there was a log right here as soon as I hooked up I did reef him as hard as I can but this log, he still managed. What happened is the tippet got wrapped around the log and the fish was still on. I managed to get the tippet off the log and got him out. But as soon as I did, I knew I had to reef on him because look at that willow and that bush downstream, reefed on him and brought him in as soon as I could. Surfed him on top of the water and away you go. The magic 2X, eh? Yeah, you got to do that. I mean, in here you have no chance otherwise. If you let him go, it's over. 
At that point, it was a fairly safe bet to chuck a cicada at this mid-river fish cruising the gravel wash just upstream. We moved up to a deeper flat water tailout with the eddy flow 45 degree angle to the main. The fish had to be looking at me, or at the very least would see any cast to it from my position. I was either bushed out or the water too deep to really move, so I lengthened my leader to 18 feet and 5x on this one. Of course the fish also wasn't going to rise to eat a dry fly, so I had to get a small tungsten beadhead nymph 2.5 feet below the dry and try to feather my cast in there. It's just you and me, baby, please. You keep me breathing. My heart won't hold back. It's trust in everything. It's trust in everything. The devil can knock all he wants. We're not answering. I'll tell him to get in line. We're busy dreaming. Oh
I thought my eyes were funny. It was really glary water, but I was sure I saw a fish in ankle deep water. It was as nondescript a lie as you're gonna find. Then I swore there were two fish. Not a lot of movement, and to be honest, I wasn't sure they weren't just sticks, but to try to catch both, I had to go at the lower one and then put the guns to it to pull it out without spooking the other one while minding the heavy wash current of the river. Let's at least give it a try. little riffle seam right there uh, basically is about I don't know a foot deep and those two fish were sitting right in there and the only reason for that is that's the only break on a gravel wash and it's a vertical break of current and those fish were just nosed in holding along that break just on the bottom swaying left and right I honestly thought this was going to be the easiest fish of the day, that I'd play catch and the video would be epic. Nope. In hindsight, of all the fish we covered that day, that likely was the one that needed 5x and a size 16 caddis and maybe a tiny dropper nymph. After it looked the second time, it just slid under the log in the main current. Ah well. It's funny how things go. We had started after 10 a.m. and had only worked a mile of river and came upon this brown. By that point in the day, we'd had a whale of a time. What you see here may be two-thirds of the fish we'd caught by just after 2 p.m. We really wanted to hone in on a rising fish and get an epic eat on film rather than catch more fish. Well, we got our wish with this riser.
But while this fish was rising in front of us, the river went to crap. The first rule of Spring Creek fishing in New Zealand is to ask the farmer what time the cows come in for milking or if there was any in-stream work planned. We walked above the first line of a couple hundred cows heading in for milking and found still more murky water. Our day was over. It was the last day of a few weeks away from our friend's place and we had a six hour drive ahead of us. We kind of looked at each other. There really wasn't anything on the planet that was going to be much better so we just enjoyed the walk out and stopped for an ice cream before driving up island. <laughs>